The Sisters of Battle, or as they are more commonly referred to today, the Adeptus Sororitas, had pretty humble beginnings. I remember looking at them as a kid when I was deciding which army to pick, and being told by friends that it just wasn't worth it. At the time, they didn't have many models, uh, it was pretty hard to put together a full list, and those models were mostly metal and expensive. The expensive part may not have changed, but over the last few years, this faction has received more love than almost any other faction, including the Space Marines, and that's a pretty big deal for the Games Workshop. Since there has been so much love for the faction, I think it's safe to assume we have a lot more Sisters players who are eager to learn about the history of the faction. Especially since the Sisters have been around for about 25 years now, and that's a pretty long time. I have here in front of me every printed codex, including some supplement material, starting right from the beginning in 1997, up to 9th edition in 2021, including some supplement material such as Warzone Necromund, which was only released today, which is why I'm recording the video today. So I wanted to share some key bits of history from each book, so that with the one video you can get up to speed with how the faction has changed over the years. I want to keep this fairly light and easy to digest, so I will not be covering all of the rules and stratagems and every single piece of lore. Well, yes, all of that stuff is interesting, well, knowing the old rules isn't going to help you play the game in the current day, and doesn't really tell you much about the faction. As for lore, I'm not a lore expert, and there's some already great channels that cover the lore of the sisters in great detail, uh, such as Major Kill. Instead, I would like to focus on how the units and models have changed over the years. I want to show you some of the amazing artwork and photography in these books, and just give you a glimpse of what it would have been like as a sisters player over the last 25 years, and try to shed some light on some of the thematic changes that the sisters have gone through over this time as well. Before we get started, I really need to give thanks to the Sisters of Battle Discord. There is a great group of people on this Discord who have been very helpful in fact-checking a few things for me and helping me find certain resources. While I've known of Sisters for a long time, I'm only a recent player as well, so don't expect that I'll get everything right in this video. Uh, so please leave a message in the comments if I need to be corrected or, or you think I'm painting sisters in an incorrect light. Anyways, with that out of the way, I've been playing this video for a long time and I'm really excited to share this with you. So we'll get started with an overview right after the intro. The first depiction of Sisters of Battle that I've been able to find was in 1st edition of Warhammer 40,000, also known as Rogue Trader. There was a single picture with the text on the pauldrons, Sister Sin. The faction itself wasn't properly established until 2nd edition though, as far as I can tell. So this was the first Sisters Codex in 1997 for the 2nd edition of 40,000. To this date, it still has one of the most iconic pieces of artwork on the front cover. This canonist was loved by fans so much that somewhere around 2016, a model of this character was released and looks fairly similar to the artwork. The next codex was in 3rd edition, six years later in 2003, and represents a pretty big thematic shift with sisters becoming a lot closer to the Inquisition and a lot more grimdark. The wait for the next codex was a staggering 8 years for 5th edition in 2011. Also, it wasn't really a standalone codex, it was spread across two White Dwarf magazines. Well, actually three, but I didn't find that out until much later. Don't worry, I have a digital copy of the third when we get to it. The 6th edition codex came out in 2013, I believe. However, it was digital only and pretty hard to find these days. Lucky for you, I managed to track one down. So, Sisters haven't received a lot of love at this point, but all of that changed with 8th edition in 2019. The majority of the lineup was revised with plastic models, and Sisters were well and truly a standalone force on the battlefield. A few models were introduced later in the 8th edition, so their introduction ended up being in Psychic Awakening Pariah. 9th edition in 2021 brought more new models and new sculpts than we were able to keep up with. 
and it seems like a common theme now is fleshing out orders with Warzone releases. Sharadon Act 2 focusing on Our Martyred Lady, and Nakmond focus on Bloody Rose. I also threw in a White Dwarf that covers the uh, Sisters Novitiates. So that's a very quick roundup of what books we have to get through. Let's start back in 1997 in 2nd edition. This book was written by Gavin Forp, and here are the artists. I'd like to share attributions for all of these books, but after a few editions, Games Workshop stopped sharing the names of the writers. From what I've heard, this wasn't anything nefarious on Games Workshop's part. It was mostly to protect the writers from community blowback for changes that people didn't like, or nerfs to their faction. Let's take another look at this front cover. The aesthetic established here by John Blanche back in 1997 still strongly represents who the Adeptus Rorators are today. In the front we have a very strong and modest canoness. If you look at other miniature games and video games, it was extremely rare in the pre-2000s games of any kind to not have overly sexualized or skimpy armor. So in many ways Games Workshop was ahead of the time. On the left we can see sisters fighting among piles of skulls from heretics. I'm not sure what this banner signifies, but it looks somewhat similar to the Our Martyred Lady banner. So perhaps that is related. On this side you can see what I'm assuming are confessors, with an arch confessor down the front. Maybe they're just priests of the Ministorum. Either way, they look fairly seedy. Here we see a bunch of Our Martyred Lady models defending an Ecclesiarchy shrine. These models were all pewter at the time, with plastic models not coming until much later. I feel a lot of nostalgia for the terrain used in these product shots at the time. It reminds me a lot of scale railway landscapes, which I'm sure Games Workshop used for their inspiration. If this model in the middle is unfamiliar, that is because it is an Arch Confessor. These units were later removed from the rules, but they played a big part in the early years of the game. The first half of this book is very lore heavy, summarising some of the key events in the Horus Heresy and the formation of the Ecclesiarchy, including a lot of how it changed through the various rises and falls. There was quite a bit of lore front loading before we even talk much about the sisters. Ten pages into the lore we get to a section on the Daughters of the Emperor, a sect of about 500 female only cultists who worship the Emperor and hone their combat ability through monk-like discipline. How these women become the start of the Adeptus Sororitas is a pretty long story with quite a lot of blood and betrayal, but this is really where it all started. Again, for full lore deep dives I recommend these videos by Majorkill. They explain it a lot better than I could. You may be surprised to know that the orders we use today were established right back at the first book and haven't changed too much. They stem from two major convents, Sanctorum and Prius. The orders militant in each are Bloody Rose, Martyred Lady, Valorous Heart, Sacred Rose, I Ebon Chalice, and Argent Shroud. There are also a number of non-combat orders that focus on healing and spreading the word of the Emperor. The colour schemes for these orders haven't changed very much either consisting mostly of different variations of black, silver, red, and white. Here is a standard troop squad of our martyred lady sisters, the Sister Superior often having a melee weapon. Much like the Battle Sisters, Seraphim are also in pewter. These flying stems are actually pewter as well. So you had to use your imagination a fair bit, I still think they look pretty good though, even if the pose is a little bit weird. Also pictured here we have a very old fashioned rhino facing off against a squad of Eldar units. Here we have some more heavy weapon sisters. I also like that one is wielding a mace. It was quite a while before we saw more sisters using maces. The immolator was a lot more modest at the beginning using a standard rhino body and simply replacing the turret. Here we have the squad together waving a Our Martyr Lady banner and joining some ultramarine bikers. Next we have a two page spread where you can see what a full force of sisters in 1997 would have looked like. We have three squads of battle sisters, a missionary, an arch confessor, a squad of seraphim, a rhino, and an immolator. The book also included an army list, so we know that the force would have been worth 
1289 points at the time. Here we have a closer look at some of the Imperial Priest units available, including the Arch Confessor. I really liked his design, although it feels a lot more appropriate now that we have sister squads being led by sisters. Next we have probably my favourite page of the book. There are a number of sketches here by John Blanche that give ideas for conversions and different schemes. I love his suggestion down here of using a Necromunda Escher gang member to convert into a sister. I think this is an awesome idea. In fact, if this video gets just 100 likes, I will commit to going to my local hobby shop picking up a set of Escher Gang and converting them into Battle Sisters. Or probably more fitting, a squad of Novitiates. So let's make that happen, it sounds really fun. These are the banners I was talking about earlier. I really like these designs. I'd like to do a custom stencil of the Bloody Rose banner and spray it on a Rhino or something. Alright, so now let's get into the army list. What models do we have available? We have the Cannoness, which can also be a banner bearer or a bodyguard. Missionaries and Confessors were in. Veteran models were available such as Sister Superior and Seraphim Superiors. The Preacher, which is still available today and still in Pewter. It costs a bit more than 10 points now though. The All Pewter Battle Sisters of course. However the squad size is not variable like it is today. It had a flat cost of 140 points for 4 Sisters and a Sister Superior. Same with the Seraphim squad, we had 4 Seraphim, 1 Superior for 175 points. The Fraturus Militar Band. I hadn't heard much about them until reading this book. This is one of the few pictures I was able to find of what the units in the squad would look like. There is little references to the Fraturus Militar again. In fact, the only other codex that I've noticed them mentioned is an 8th edition under Auto Hereticus. For support we had Rhinos and Immolators, no Exorcists or Castigators yet I'm afraid. There were also a few special characters such as Saint Praxideus, Helena the Virtuous, and one of the longer running special characters, Uriah Jacobus. I believe you can still play him today using the missionary rules. That's it for book one. I feel it does a great job of laying the groundwork, which is backed up further by how much of these units are still in the core of Sisters today. The next book is Witch Hunters, released in 2003 for 3rd edition. I'd love to get some feedback from old school sisters players for how they felt about the shift to a more grim dark theme and more of a focus on the Inquisition. Did Games Workshop lack confidence in the sisters or did they just think it would be easier to coax people into playing them by marketing them as a worthy detachment for another Imperium force? Either way, this is actually a really good codex, so let's get started. The front cover features an inquisitor in front, melting a heretic. To the left we have some sisters beautifully decked out in red armour which I'm assuming was to represent Bloody Rose. On the other side we have a very confronting Repentia, while flying in the background you can see what I'm assuming is Saint Celestine. Very cool. I love this picture of an imperial structure being protected from heretics by our martyr lady detachment. There's a lot going on in this picture, so I won't point out everything, however you may notice that while the Battle Sisters models have not changed, the Games Workshop paint scheme for our Mata Lady has. In the last book that we looked at, the armor was mostly black with red guns. Now the robes are red, and guns are more of a silver. Also, base rims have gone from being painted green to being painted brown. I don't know why, but I do find it interesting how Games Workshop has evolved their design style over time. These are the attributions to the writers and artists if that interests you. I won't mention much about lore, however the obvious development is Auto Hereticus, which arose after the Age of Apostasy, and led to this environment where the Adeptus Auratus and the Inquisition are closely working together. Much like our world, the interpretation of religious figures is subjective, which causes a lot of division in Auto Hereticus, as everyone seeks to enact the will of the Emperor in different ways. This led to groups either defined as Radicals or Puritans. The artwork in this book is truly next level. I love how menacing this penitent engine looks. The Repentia, truly work of nightmares. It makes my skin crawl just looking at the harm they have endured to repent and become these 
Super Soldiers Fueled by Pain. As you know, I love a good page of sketches, and I especially like this concept in the middle, which feels like a hospitaler. Here we can see the first uh, drawing of an exorcist tank. This is the only place in the book you see one though, so I'm assuming it wasn't officially released at the time of printing. On to army lists. The first big change is that we have Inquisitors listed in the Codex. You can, however, use Heroines, who can use a lot of the same benefits as Inquisitors, so you're never actually required to take them in your detachment. The Priest, who is really just the Preacher by a different name. This is the first time we see Arcoflagellants in the Codex, alongside with Repenture. You also get some more options for how you can use your standard sister squad with the introduction of Celestians and Dominions. The Codex also includes Assassins. In more recent codices, Inquisitors and Assassins are no longer included. However, rules may still allow for a single unit or special unit. The exception being Death Cult Assassins, which stayed in Sisters codices much longer. For transports, there are a few listed from various Imperium forces, but the Rhino is the only one listed as being crewed by Sisters of Battle. Not much has changed for troops, however we move from a static 5 models per squad to a variable between 10 and 20. This may seem like a lot, but just remember that your Dominion and Celestians can still be 5 person squads. The Fraturus troops are, appear to have been replaced by Inquisitional Stormtroopers. I wonder how they got away with the copyright for that name. Probably why we don't see them anymore. Anyways, the Seraphim are back with a very sensible 5 to 10 person squad size. On the heavy list, we have Retributors, newly added, and the Exorcist, while the Immolator is still on the list. We also have Penitent Engines and something called an Orbital Strike. The Orbital Strike could only be played if there was an Inquisitor on the team, and you had to pick the target terrain piece at the beginning of the game. The rules are a little weird, I can see why it was removed at a later point. So if you're looking at the current range of models from the Adeptus Sororitas and feel like it has had a bit of an identity crisis, I hope this era of Witch Hunters with Radicals and Puritans has shown you why. While you definitely had enough Adeptus Sororitas models at this point to make a full detachment, as shown in these pictures, it was still heavily encouraged that you take them as part of another Imperial force. I really like the old Inquisitor models with strong Vampire Hunter vibes. This squad also has a Crusader, which has remained part of the Adeptus Sororitas for a fair while. You can also see a Hospitala. And down here we have a Dialogus. These were the Assassin models, which still look really nice and super creepy. And some Penitent Engines and Arcos. Here are the Armored Lady themed sisters, along with a squad of Puto Repenture. We also get a look at the original Saint Celestine model, which looks really stunning. The Rhino and Immolator get a new look, featuring a glass dome, which can either be used as a top hatch, on the Rhino or a protective shield on the Immolator. One thing I miss most about the old codices is how they encourage conversions. Some really great ideas here, I especially like the saw blade arms on this guy. As mentioned earlier, the schemes haven't changed much, but do definitely look a lot more vibrant than 2nd edition. The rest of the book is mostly suggesting battle formations and other ways you can mix your witch hunters with other armies of the Imperium. There's also a great page here that shows off some spectacular conversions and paint jobs. So I had to share these with you. Okay, so when I first started playing this video I initially wanted to release it as an all-in-one, but after some review I think it's best to break it into a few parts that are roughly 20 to 30 minutes long and release them over a few weeks for your sanity and for mine. Please let me know what you have enjoyed so far, and how you feel about this format. This is a bit different to the normal videos I do, which has contributed to it taking a bit longer to create than usual. But don't worry, I have plenty of the usual hobby videos in the works as well. Some stuff I'm really excited about, and I can't wait to finish them. With all that said, thank you for watching, and stay tuned as we continue the Codex review next week. Like and subscribe if you haven't already done so, so you don't miss a thing. Thank you for watching.